Good morning, everybody. Good morning. John chapter 11. Everybody have a good weekend. Avoid, uh, we avoided uh, as much snow at least as they said we were going to get, uh, which I'm thankful for. Um, I spent all of yesterday at a basketball tournament, and uh, those of you who know what that's like, 10 hours on a bleacher, it uh, does not make for a good day. Um, but yesterday at the tournament, it was an elementary tournament, which is really rough to watch for 10 hours. Um, <laughs> yesterday we had a kid, uh, they're not always, kids are not always the most coordinated in fourth grade. Um, or the most aware. Uh, and had a kid, the ball came off the uh, hoop, hit him right in the face, um, and uh, you know he starts crying and uh, he has a little bit of blood coming out of his nose, and so he's pretty worked up. And uh, next thing you know, here comes this lady running out of the bleachers out onto the court. And next thing you know, he is no longer crying. He's just worried about mom getting back into the bleachers. <laughs> now, I tell you that story this morning because I want to speak on the thought of crying a little bit. He didn't stop crying because the pain went away. He didn't stop crying because he wasn't hurt. He stopped crying because he was focused on his mom, right? Uh, don't embarrass me, mom. I want to speak on this thought this morning, though. Is Jesus still <coughs> weeping? <laughs> That's just a... A big word for crying, I know. Uh, but I want you this morning, we're in John chapter 11, I want you, I'm going to ask you guys to memorize the verse this morning. You guys think you can do that? All right, I think we can. It's real simple. John chapter 11, verse 35, it simply says this, Jesus wept. Can we say Jesus wept? Jesus wept. All right, you think we can memorize that? Yes. All right, I'm going to ask you guys tonight, Isaac and Nolan. Okay. Uh oh, I'll ask you next week. Okay. All right. Jesus wept. John chapter 11 is a story about Jesus uh, coming uh, to his friend Lazarus' aid. Now, when we read the story, and I won't get into it for sake of time, but you can read it when you get home in John chapter 11. I highly recommend that you read through it. Lazarus is a close friend of Jesus. Uh, Jesus finds out he's with his disciples in his ministry. He hears that uh, Lazarus is very sick, that he's very close to death. Uh, his sister Mary has uh, wrote and sent a, a letter to Jesus asking him to come and to heal him. And we know the stories of Jesus uh, healing people and, and curing people of their ailments uh, and sicknesses that they had. And she said, Jesus, this is a great friend of, uh, of yours. She even says in the letter, your friend whom you love is sick. Jesus uh, knows the, the magnitude of the sickness and that if nothing happens, that Lazarus very well will die. And uh, I find interesting in the story as you read through it, it tells us some things about Jesus uh, that I find interesting and, and it, that can apply to our life today. Uh, Jesus, uh, it says that Jesus waited still two days, I believe it was. You can look through it, but he waited before he comes. Now, if it was me and I heard someone in my family is sick, I mean, I'm going to go right away. Not that I can heal anybody. Uh, I took a CPR and first aid class once so I can put a Band-Aid on you, but that's about it. But if I heard that someone in my family was sick, if, if I walked out of church this morning and I got a phone call that my mom or my dad or, or one of my brothers or sisters or my grandparent uh, was in the hospital today, uh, I would walk out of here, leave today, and I would probably go down to the hospital and see them and be with them and, and find out what I could do to help them. But Jesus hears about this and he waits. He waits enough time to where Lazarus ultimately dies and his, enough time has gone by to where he has died, they've prepared his body, they've put him in the tomb, and they're having the funeral for him. And Jesus finally shows up. Jesus shows up there and, and he has some uh, conversations. Mary is angry and she says, if you had just come sooner, you could have healed him. If you had just been here, and Jesus comes up to the funeral and he begins to see everybody standing around uh, the, the tomb of Lazarus. And they're weeping and crying and they're sorrowful and they've just lost 
somebody and we have all experienced death uh, to someone in our family, to somebody close to us. And times of funeral are never fun and oftentimes filled with grief and sorrow. And that's the setting that we're in this morning. And Jesus is standing there, and the Bible tells us in verse 35 that Jesus wept. I think it's interesting because we know that he goes on to heal, not just heal, he goes on to bring Lazarus back to life. If we read the rest of the story, he tells, uh, he, he speaks life back into Lazarus, and, and Lazarus rises up and comes out of the tomb, and and one of the few cases in the story of, uh, in the book of the Bible, where somebody is brought back to life by Jesus Christ. But if Jesus knew that he was going to save this man's life, why would he weep? Why would he cry? I mean, if, if I knew somebody was sick, but I knew that they were going to come, they were going to make it, they were going to be healed, I, I wouldn't cry. If I knew that someone had died, but they were going to come back to life somehow, I don't think I would cry. But Jesus weeps, and I want us to look at this reason. I believe there are two reasons that Jesus cried on that day, and I believe again that Jesus still cries over us today. It won't be long, but I want to look at this thought. Of, is Jesus still weeping? Number one, I want us to see that Jesus weeps over our sorrow. The whole reason that Jesus stands there on this day in John chapter 11 and he looks at the crowd of people gathered for this funeral who are sad, who are hurting, who are broken about the loss of their friend, of their brother, of their uncle, uh, whatever it may be. As they look, as he looks out at this funeral, his heart is broken for the hurt of the people at the funeral. We oftentimes go to funerals you ever been to funerals of somebody you didn't really know, but you were really good friends with their family? I've, had to, I've been to a few of those where, where, where my best friend, their, their brother died. And I didn't really know their brother. I've met him a few times. But I attend the funeral. Why? Because I want to support. I want to be there for my friend. I want to be an encouragement to my friend. And, and my heart breaks as I watch them weep. That's a little bit about what Jesus was experiencing here. As he looks out over the crowd and he sees... The brokenness. Remember, Jesus is God, right? Come and, and, and to live as a man uh, so that he could live and die for us. But as Jesus looks out, he's reminded of the humanity of the people there that day. That the people there are broken, that they hurt, that their lives are filled with love and love for a man that is gone. I believe this morning that Jesus still weeps over our sorrows as well. You ever wondered if anybody really cared about what you're struggling with? If anybody truly cared about the hurts and, and, and the brokenness and, and, and the wrongs that have been done to you in your life, perhaps you have been uh, hurt in some way in your life. Perhaps somebody has done you wrong. Somebody has abused you. Somebody has done something to you that has brought you great pain. Perhaps you have lost something that has brought you great pain and sorrow. Can I tell you this morning that Jesus knows about that and he cares. I will never forget growing up. I grew up as a, uh, my dad was a pastor as well, so I was in church every week. My mom used to sing a lot of specials. Uh, she sang at church a lot. And one of the songs that she sang a lot was a song that called, Does Jesus Care? And the words would say, Does Jesus Care? Does anyone care? But the chorus would, re would echo back, Yes, he cares. I know he cares. For his love cares for me. Yes, Jesus cares. There are many people today, I believe, that are walking through life filled with sorrow and pain that they can almost no longer bear and they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to get over it. They don't know how to get through it. And today I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ offers a way out of your sorrow. Jesus stands there on that day and he commands Lazarus to come forward and brings him back to life. And instantly the tears of sadness were turned into tears of joy as they were good from mourning the loss 
of their friend to celebrating the reuniting of their friendship. He was dead and now he's alive. What they had lost, Jesus gave back to them. Can I tell you this morning, what you lost, Jesus can give to you. What has been taken from you, Jesus can restore to you. What has been broken in your life, Jesus can heal and fix today. You don't have to carry the sorrows that you carry in your life. Jesus can carry them for you. You don't have to carry the, 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 the pain that we deal with in our life. Let Jesus heal that pain. I believe this morning that Jesus looks over the life of so many people wishing that he could help us heal and move past our hurt if we simply let him help us. I, I've been very open in the past about my, my struggles with <coughs> things like depression. Can I tell you that I found that I never truly began, and I'm not over it, I don't know if I'll ever conquer it, but I never truly began to find help with it until I let Jesus begin to carry my burden. Until we begin to say, God, I'm tired of carrying all of this pain. Man, no person should have to carry a lifetime of pain in their life. There are people who have been hurt and abused by people in their life, and they're walking around. We talked about bitterness a couple weeks ago. The first Sunday of the year, we talked about the danger of bitterness. And I talked about the fact that you cannot carry around bitterness towards somebody for what they've done to you. You need to move on from that. Listen, what did I say in that message? Forgiveness is not about accepting that what they did was right. It's about you saying that you're not going to allow them to have power over your life any longer. Hatred will consume you and destroy you. And your pain will only bring you sorrow and despair. Jesus weeps over our sorrow this morning. I, I'm here to tell you, if you are dealing with sorrow in your life, if you've never gotten over the loss of somebody in your life, can I tell you, we in America do not know how to grieve properly when we lose somebody. I said it before here. We're expected to bear some, bury somebody, our mother, on Friday and be back to work on Monday. You look at other cultures, they have weeks and months long processes of grieving. And I wish that we could take some more time to learn and to, to, to understand about how to deal with our emotions and our feelings properly. Because here in America, we don't do it very well at all. Perhaps you're dealing with loss still. Perhaps you're dealing with hurt. I had the opportunity recently to, to, to talk to some people who had experienced some sexual abuse in their life. And I had the opportunity to hear their story about how they have been able to move on through Jesus. Not because of what happened to them was right. It wasn't. But because they said, God, I don't want to carry this pain any longer. Mm -hmm. Jesus can bring healing to your life. Number one, Jesus weeps over our sorrow. But number two, this morning, Jesus weeps over our sin. Think about this. Jesus came to this earth, right? So that he could live and die for us because of our sin. Jesus loves us. Romans 5 8 tells us that in while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That in our worst days, Jesus still loves us. If we go to Luke chapter 19, I'm not going to read a lot of verses there, but just verse 41, if you'll turn there quickly, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of backstory on this verse. Jesus is riding into the city. This is shortly before his death. Jesus, uh, I mean, at this point, his ministry is, is at the top, the peak of his ministry. He's being followed by thousands and listened to it, and all the miracles that have taken place, and all of the teachings that have been given, and all of the, the different things that have gone on. And, and uh, I think about, you know, Palm Sunday as he comes in, then they're chanting and cheering, and, and they're saying, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, he's come, and they're laying the palm branches down. And, and, and just shortly after that, he's going to be put to death. In verse 41, it says this, When he was come near, he beheld the city, and wept over it. 
He looks at the city. Remember, him being God knows all things and knows that the very people who are right now worshiping, following, listening in just a few short days are going to cry to put him to death. And he begins to weep over it. Weep over their hatred. Weep over their sins. You know, this morning, Jesus looks at our lives and he doesn't see our sin and past condemnation. We have a flawed view of Jesus. Yes, Jesus and God are holy. Yes, he judges sin. But I believe this, that he also has compassion upon us for our sin. That God ultimately wants to forgive us, not condemn us. That Jesus offers forgiveness to escape the condemnation. Because if Jesus' ultimate goal was for us to face the penalty of our sin, he would have sent us there already. He would have immediately said, you have sinned, you, have not, you are not right with me, I immediately judge you for your sin. But he doesn't do that, does he? He says, come to me. Let me forgive you. Let me show you my love. Let me show you my compassion. I think of story after story after story. I was reading through John chapter 4 this week. The story of the Samaritan woman at the well. And Jesus comes and he says, give me a drink of water. And she says, uh, how is it that you are speaking to me? Remember, at this time in, in Israel, there's a great cultural divide of, between the Jewish people and Samaritans. And, 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 and really a lot of racism and hatred between the two people. And she says to him, how are you even speaking to me? I am a Samaritan woman. And he says to her, if you simply knew who I was, you would ask of me to drink instead of me asking you. And he tells her about how she can have a spiritual water in her soul. He gives the analogy of water for life in a physical realm, but just as he is the necessity for spiritual life, I think about the fact that he does not ever in that chapter condemn her for her sin. We find out that she's, she's with multiple men. We find out that she's in all kinds of sin in her life, but Jesus never really condemns her, never judges her for it. He simply just tells her what? Believe in me, and you'll be made whole. I believe this morning that Jesus weeps over our sin today. Even those as believers today. I've said before, I say, I, I say it again, that being a Christian does not mean you are perfect. And if you believe that, please do not call yourself a Christian. We are not perfect. We are just loved by God. And though we continue sometimes to fail, his love continues to forgive. But maybe today you're here and you don't really know what a Christian means. You've never been saved or you don't even really know what I mean by that phrase. You, 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 you've never, you're not a believer. or Maybe you are a believer, but you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. And you would say, what do you mean by my sin? What do you mean uh, by becoming a follower of Jesus Christ? Uh, the Bible clearly teaches this morning that if we, uh, that every person that has ever lived is a sinner. We've all done something wrong, right? I mean, from the youngest of ages, I, I know y'all were a lot better than I was, but I mean, I used to lie. Still do. I mean, I used to fight with my siblings and still sometimes do. I mean, I was, you know, not perfect. Because of that, I needed a Savior. A spiritual Savior. The Bible says that man cannot enter heaven unless he is righteous. And you and I are far from righteous. <clears throat> But there is one who is righteous. His name is Jesus Christ. John chapter 14 verse 6 says this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Romans 10.13 tells us that whosoever 
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This morning, if you are struggling with your sin, if you're struggling with your sorrows, know this, that if you would come this morning and say, God, I believe that you're real. I believe that you came and died for my sins to offer me forgiveness, to offer me hope, to offer me peace, to offer me joy, but ultimately to offer me your love and say, God, I want to follow you today. You can become a follower of Jesus Christ and experience the blessings and the eternal home in heaven with Jesus Christ today. Because I believe this, that as Jesus looks on your life, he weeps, hoping, praying, wishing that you would come to him and follow him. And I believe this as well, that he looks at those of us who are his followers today, and he says, I wish that they would bring me their pain and their sorrows and their hurts and allow me to heal them, allow me to carry them, and allow me to love them. So this morning, a simple verse, Jesus wept. Can I say this morning that Jesus' tears can wipe away our tears if we would allow him to take our burdens. And if you're here this morning and you have never made that decision to follow Christ in your life, I pray that today you would allow Jesus Christ to become the, the, the preeminent figure in your life and you would say today, I'm going to follow Christ. Sister, would you come? We're going we're gonna to sing a song to close out our services this morning. If you don't know Jesus, if you have questions about Jesus, please, I would love to take the Bible and show you how you can know that Jesus is your Savior, how you can know that God uh, has forgiven you of your sins and that you are loved. And if you're here today and you are a believer, but you say, I've got a lot of pain in my life, God, please take it from me. Would you pray today that God will begin to heal your sorrow? Well, let's stand and turn our